Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the DAISY standalone video blog, uh, the first of its kind actually. And uh, I'm Rocket, the project lead on DAISY and with me I have my production assistant Matt Lightfoot. Matt, you want to tell us why I've given up, well why both of us have given up our Monday nights? Well hello there. Um, so we're going to be showing you quite a few exciting things today. We've got some of the major improvements to the maps. We've got the swamps, which we mentioned in the latest developer blog. We've got an expanded military base that we've uh, we've got in there. And then we've also got a new island as well that you'll uh, be able to see a bit later. We've also got the basic implementation of our clothing system, which you'll be able to see. And uh, you'll also be able to see our new method of spawning loot in buildings, which uh, will be very exciting. So, Rocket, what's the screen we're looking at now? Well, uh, we've, this is a good example of, of some of the stylistic and functional changes we've made to the UI. The whole aim is to be going with a much more simplified approach than with uh, previous uh, products like, like Armour 2 that DayZ, the mod, was based on. Uh, a good example is, so, you know, configuring the options and things like that. It's, it's much simpler, and uh, we really want it to... Uh, yeah, for, for users to, to go into things much easier um, and uh, for it to cope well with uh, different, you know, different sizes of, of screens and, um, yeah, you know, and, and, and different ways that people want to configure it. Uh, and there's a couple little errors popping up there, so I hope people do appreciate. This is a very uh, work in progress, um, uh, super duper, like uh, early version of DayZ, so there will be a lot of little errors and stuff as we go through. So, Rocky, that character in the background, what's he wearing? Is that your normal going out gear? It, uh, yeah, no, essentially what we're looking at here is uh, the player's avatar. So there, he's their character from the last server they were playing on. So the real focus with DayZ Standalone has to been to make the player's character much more a part of their gameplay. And so right from when you first start up Daisy, you're going to see the last character you've played, you're going to see the stuff he's had on him. We've been thinking about adding in some statistics and stuff on the screen as well, but for the moment we really want to stick with the uh, with the real basics. So you'll see uh, your character, uh, you know, male, female, whatever race you are, and uh, what the equipment you have on when you come to this screen. And that's really a theme that is, is going to permeate throughout the product. So should we jump into uh, jump into game then? We should. Uh, so the idea here that we've got at the moment is that you can obviously change the server you're playing on, open up a server browser, or you can click play and go into the last server you're on. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go into the change server here, and then I'm going to hide all the magic that's currently going on here so we don't get DDoSed. Now we've made heavy use of Steam uh, and their technology, which has been really useful in, in what we're developing. Again, before we start playing, I want to add in the caveat that uh, we, uh, you know, there's, there will be potentially a lot of bugs and a lot of stuff that comes out in this. Uh, and people shouldn't expect that anything that's currently in there is going to be the way that it stays. So that's Matt walking around, and it's me on the camera. How you doing, Matt? I think you can wave, man. Did I wave? I can't even remember the wave key. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I can't remember. Okay, okay, total video bug failure. I can't remember the wave key. Um, so what Matt's going to do is he's going to show uh, the clothing stuff. So, Matt, if you maybe take your clothes off over here. Who are? I'll, like, zoom in here. So just, just before we start as well, for, for uh, so that everybody realizes it, we're playing a, uh, a version of Daisy that has a, a lot of stuff disabled on it because we really just want to focus on the key parts. You know, we want to keep some surprises and there is still a lot of stuff that hasn't been finished. So um, what we're going to do here is we're really just going to demonstrate the, uh, um, yeah, the, uh, the clothing stuff. So what, what Matt's doing here is he's going to put, uh, put on some clothes. So if you just hold there for a second, Matt, stand up and maybe give us like a little twirl or something. So what, what Matt's done is he's put on a lovely red hoodie. What a beautiful item. 
Uh, so the idea is that there's many different slots of, of different clothing that you can put on, like a uh, hat and uh, eyewear, face mask, uh, hoodie. Um, so Matt's put on a hat there. Um, and uh, maybe he'll put on some pants at some point. But I don't want to. Uh, as well, it's, it's important people note, so on the ground at the moment, we don't have the on-ground version of the items, but that's coming out. So you won't see these like perfectly filled out pants sitting on the ground. They'll actually be yeah, proper pants. I'll just get down and be like real cinematic here with it. Give me, give me your best like model pose. Yeah, check that out. So um, yeah, G give us a little twirl maybe. Nice. So one of our uh, artists we've got working on this, Painterflex, has been working on these clothing items. We've got a huge list. There's like, already on my list, there's like a hundred uh, different stuff we want to put in. So, um, you know, we're going to have different variants of watches and different types of compasses and gas masks and what else? Have I missed anything else cool that's, that's in there, Matt? Aviator glasses, of course. Yeah, yeah, true, you know, like different kinds of glass and stuff. But but I really want to focus on functional type items first. Uh, so I guess one thing that a lot of people probably don't think this is that cool, but this is a very big deal for the real virtuality system. Um, you know, it kind of has nothing like that, really. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty awesome. Uh, did we have another top somewhere? Yeah, should we uh, spawn in some uh, some different colored ho you, hoodies so we're not, know how to we're do not that? wearing a... Matching clothing. Does it matter if I do that in the video blog? I don't think it does. I don't think it does. This bit here is going to be blurred out because we don't want you to see our new cool inventory screen. And we'll probably blur out this bit as well. Okay, so I've put the jacket on the ground for Matt and he can go and um, he can swap that. So he's put his, his other top down and he's putting that one on. Awesome. Uh, another thing I guess uh, that we'll show people or maybe tell people later on as well is each clothing item can actually have space for you to put different items in. So I think at the moment we've got it defaulted to you can sick, fit like uh, six small items in your jeans and stuff like that. Cool, so I guess uh, put the tactical vest on, show people how that works as well. So the idea with this is that uh, you know we're going to be able to do things like... Uh, um, you know body armor, stab vests, uh, as well as more like space oriented items like this one you know as well as oh i probably should have put a backpack in as well so, you know stuff like that so there's all that that usual stuff that you've got but i think that's that's probably enough for us for um for clothing should we uh, should we jump on some of the improvements with the map sure let's do that and here we are with the swamp uh yeah so maybe you want to give us a bit of a background on this before i kick into technical mumbo jumbo map so, really, this was one of the ideas of Ivan. Um, he wrote to us when he was uh, in prison in Greece, and uh, he wanted to include some areas that we really hadn't experienced before with Tenaris. And he thought that a swamp would be a great way to kind of mix it up a bit and add in a new, different type of playstyle. Yeah, so this, making Tenaris really fit the whole DayZ thing has been obviously, you know, quite a key focus for us. And... Uh, and definitely, you know, having that in the map design is, is really something we wanted to have, you know, a lot more of. So there's a lot of these areas, and we've got huge plans. There's a lot of, you know, new areas, new uh, facilities and stuff to come across that we've really wanted to put in. So this is kind of just the start for us, and it's one of the exciting things that we're able to do with the project. It's not just to add features, but also to add, uh, uh, you know, add new areas and, and whole new areas of content as well. So I don't really want to say too much about this because uh, it's still very much a work in progress. This is the first day we actually have it. Uh, but um, we've, we've added Utes, which is one of the smaller islands, uh, or Utes, I don't even know how, how it's pronounced. The smaller item, island that shipped with Armour 2, we've actually added it to the world, uh, which was a request that came from 4chan. Am I even allowed to say that word on a video blog? I'm not sure I am. But so thank you, 4chan. Uh, it was a good suggestion and one I don't know why we didn't think of before. So, uh, yeah, so here it is, uh, working in there. Um, and uh, just uh, just off the coast of this other small island here. So we think it's it's going to add, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit of extra territory in there. So we thought, why not? 
how, how can I even introduce this? Maybe I should just include this bit. Okay, I will. I think I will. I, okay, this is the loot spawning mechanic. A uh, very basic idea of it. Essentially what I've done is I placed uh, some loot spawners specifically just for the little cans of beans that everyone will, who's played Daisy, the mod, will be very used to. One of the problems that we had in the mod was you'd just go around and you'd find these little piles of, of loot and you'd run into the building and see if there was a pile of loot. And if you didn't see any piles, you'd very quickly move on to the other building. So I wanted to get completely away from that and really make it feel like you were scavenging the environment. So we'll head inside this building and, and hopefully it gives a good idea of, of, of what I mean. So the idea is that loot can spawn like uh, behind an object, like see this can here. Um, so it, you really have to qu get quite dynamic about looking around and trying to find, uh, trying to find the items. So it's really a, it's a totally different, um, you know, totally different experience. So I'll grab that because I, I really like my beans. So um, yeah, so the the idea is that when you're going into these buildings, you're you're really going to have to have to scavenge and 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 find stuff uh, located and and really difficult to to find places. And someone might have come through and cleaned out most of a place, but might have missed you know something that spawned say behind the TV or something like that. So I really think it's it's going to add a lot uh, to the dynamic of, of. And it really shows how it pays to be thorough. You know, if you go through every building and search in every nook and cranny, you can find that extra can of beans or the fire axe that somebody else has missed. That may be hidden under a bed or you know in a fridge or something like that. And you know, it really it just makes you be patient and uh, really check everywhere out. Yeah, I think it's I think it's really going to radically change the whole way that uh, that Daisy is played. Um, I think uh, people will, yeah, you know, it, it is going to have a big effect on things. Uh, I haven't actually configured this this building yet, but you can see we've we've opened up some of the cupboards so that uh, you know stuff can be put inside there. Um, people probably also noticing we've improved the way the, the things move and stuff like that. But having having items underneath chairs and around tables, it's I think it's really going to add, a, you know, we can even put it inside the inside basins and stuff like that. So it's really going to have that feel like you're actually scavenging an environment rather than, uh, you know, you're just sort of running from building to building. And, and, and yeah, another example of, uh, you know, shelving, we can spawn items on. And, and, and there's some really good work going in with uh, some of the building details to make it look a little bit less polished and a little bit more like uh, some kind of bad stuff went down in the building. A bloody piano. So as we, you can see, you know, we've gone upstairs, we've got the offices, we've got the shelving, we've got the open cupboards and things. Um, so how is Luke going to appear in the world then? Uh, basically, the, the way that the loot worked previously in the mod is it was a spawn by the clients, and that obviously allowed for a great deal of hacking. Uh, it also meant that we had to do a lot of calculation to figure out whether or not a, a building required respawning or anything like that. The idea is that uh, we're actually going to spawn all the loot on the server. And uh, so when loot spawns, uh, you know, it'll spawn at the start of the mission. And as it gets cleaned out, the server can respawn it as needed. So that has some real fundamental impact uh, for us in terms of performance, uh, as well as helping us with anti-hacking measures and as well from a gameplay perspective. For example, uh, at the moment, you can you can tell whether or not someone's in a in a city by seeing if there's any live zombies walking around. If there's not, then uh, you know there's probably not someone in. So, what are the kinds of changes that we're going to should we expect to see with the map? Uh, one thing we ha uh, we have done is we've actually added a whole bunch of new like uh, rec types and, and stuff like that. So there's one actually here. One of the aims was to make them. You know, obviously a bit different and add a bit of variety because there's a heck of a lot of different wrecks in the environment. But also, like, uh, this is a good example actually up here, is uh, add in the ability for us to spawn loot and, and, and make it so that you really actually have to, you know, you're scavenging the vehicle and you're looking inside it for food and stuff like that. So um, there's been a lot of work that's gone into that.